What's good? It's Wug. We're going to talk a little Led Zeppelin, but more specifically, we're going to talk about how two songs that open their sixth album, that's the double album, Physical Graffiti from 1975, that is, again, Led Zeppelin's sixth album. And that album, which I would say is probably usually their third most revered album like critically when you look at lists and where like their albums might place on these like best albums of all time lists usually you'll see physical graffiti either their second or third best album usually the first would be their fourth album that's the one with stairway to heaven and two great opening songs on that one as well with black dog and rock and roll but usually that's the one that's their most exalted album after that it's usually either led zeppelin 2 their second album, and by the way, that fourth album by Led Zeppelin is not named for. It has become recognized and acknowledged as for over the years, but it was an untitled Led Zeppelin album, and they used like four logos, and then it was later given a name. But usually, that would be their greatest album. Their second greatest would be their second album. That's the one with a whole lot of love and heartbreaker. And if it's not that second album, then it'll be Physical Graffiti. So Physical Graffiti is one of their two or three greatest albums. And... For as great as that album is is seen to be, right, is again, this is their longest album by far. And, you know, the first side closes with Cashmere. Cashmere is one of their most iconic songs, kind of an epic, if you will. And, you know, on the second disc of this album, they have like a track two that is called Bron Ayor. And that's basically a song that was recorded way back during their third album album recording it just didn't make the album but it's like a little acoustic instrumental very short song but uh, an ultra melodic and just beautiful little piece that's just kind of hidden away on that second disc but as good as that album is and as much love as it gets its first and second song are criminally slept on like you never hear these two songs come up when the best of Led Zeppelin is discussed. Like you hear all kinds of like really good songs. You hear about Black Dog, obviously their breakthrough single, A Whole Lot of Love, their radio format revolutionizing single, Whole Lot of Love. You hear that one? Uh, I personally love Baby, I'm Gonna Leave You from their first album. Also from Four, you'll get like When the Levee Breaks or their very folky Joni Mitchell tribute, essentially going to California. To me, the best vocal performance and one of their absolute best songs is on their third album. It's called Since I've Been Loving You. To me, that might be Robert Plant's strongest vocal performance. It's just an ultra bluesy, sensational vocal performance. Listen to that one. And also, I mean, that third album opens with Immigrant Song. You hear that song mentioned as one of the better Led Zeppelin songs. As is uh, Cashmere, you know, also from Physical Graffiti, that sixth album, double album. And from Houses of the Holy, you've got The Song Remains the Same, Rain Song, Over the Hills and Far Away. All these songs are mentioned more than these two songs that I'm about to get into from Physical Graffiti. And those two songs are Custard Pie and The Rover. I swear you never hear these two songs mentioned or, you know, pop up on different Spotify playlists when you're playing similar genre or similarly styled playlists and then kind of getting into exploration on what Spotify is going to present you. You rarely see these songs, let alone hear them on radio stations. Classic rock radio never plays Custard Pie or The Rover. And I would argue that that is two of their strongest straight up rock songs, like period. Like the way that they start that album with that back to back one, two punch of Custard Pie and The Rover, I would put that up there with just about any other one, two album opener from any of their albums. Like on uh, the fourth album, you've got Black Dog and Rock and Roll. Again, that's one, that's an iconic one, two punch. To me, I personally enjoy listening to Custard Pie followed by The Rover as much, if not more, than even Black Dog and Rock and Roll. I personally love the Houses of the Holy opening, too, of Song Remains the Same and The Rain Song. But those don't get the same level of acclaim as Black Dog and Rock and Roll as a one-two punch. But again, Custard Pie and The Rover, to me, this is as good as it gets in the Led Zeppelin discography, straight up. And it's kind of interesting because this album that it's on, Physical Graffiti, 
pretty much came after, you know, their fame hit like a fever pitch. They were like the biggest rock band in the world. One or two, them and probably the Rolling Stones. You could take your pick. But this is like early 70s. They were on pretty much a rampage in the industry from 69 is when they dropped their debut. And, you know, they had a little bit of a lure going into even that debut because Jimmy Page had the reputation of being a former Yardbird and just this ultra talented session guitarist. You know what I mean? He was already respected in the game but then you've got like this kind of folky bluesy sensationally voiced Robert Plant who I mean only people like Janis Joplin could can howl in the way that Robert Plant howls when he's at his absolute best right and freshest but there was a lot of lore going into Led Zeppelin going in, I mean their name was originally going to be like the new Yardbirds and then they changed it to Led Zeppelin but ever since 1969 they dropped that one their debut in 69 and then they dropped their second album later on in 69. And that's the one that was like their ultra breakthrough, again, with Whole lot of Love. That's how their album kicks off. One of the most iconic and, you know, regularly played Led Zeppelin songs to date. And so that album pretty much made them one of the biggest, like, album sellers. This is around the time they got their own, like, private jet. This is before private jets were a thing per artist, right? Like, that wasn't a common occurrence. Led Zeppelin was very groundbreaking in how mega they got in two the second album really kind of catapulted them there. And then they dropped the third album, which is, you know, it's aged very well and it's highly respected. It's got some of their best work, in my opinion, but it wasn't like as big or as, you know, renowned as the album that came before it or the album that would come after it. And that's the one with Stairway to Heaven and then the Black Dog Rock and Roll opening uh, one and two and then the album closing, going to California and when the levee breaks best Led Zeppelin album. I even enjoy it the most. So it's both like critically the greatest and just from an enjoyment perspective, it's my personal favorite. And then they drop Houses of the Holy kind of, you know, it, it, it's a very good album. To me, it's, it might be one of their like three or four best albums just in terms of like my favorite to listen to, especially those first three songs. The song remains the same, Rain Song, and then Over the Hills and Far Away. And then they close that album with two very good and very interesting songs. No Quarter, a very psychedelic, very unlike other songs by Led Zeppelin in their catalog. No Quarter and then The Ocean, Close, Houses of the Holy. A very good album. Sometimes I feel like that might be among their most underrated albums. But it's the album that comes after that that I'm addressing here, and that's Physical Graffiti. Now, between Houses of the Holy and Physical Graffiti, Led Zeppelin basically went on this like U.S. tour. And this is one of the highest grossing tours ever, like at that time. In fact, they broke the Beatles' long-standing eight-year reigning record for biggest attendance at a show, and I think that was at Tampa Stadium in Florida. So Led Zeppelin, again, was commercially changing the game, and they got as big as it got by the time they were dropping their fourth album and then the Houses of the Holy and then going on that tour. And then they took like a hiatus where they released a concert album based on three dates at Madison Square Garden from their 1973 tour. And that ended up being the concert film the song remains the same. They've got a song by that same title, but that's what the concert film was called as well. And again, that's the song that opens up Houses of the Holy. So Houses of the Holy almost feels a little bit like a Led Zeppelin victory lap. And then they take the hiatus after that tour. But I swear, when they came back, Again, they came back with the roar. Now, Custard Pie and the Rover weren't recorded at the same time. The Rover was actually recorded in the Houses of the Holy sessions. It didn't make the album, though. So then it comes up on their next album here, Physical Graffiti. And again, that's the track, too. Custard Pie was recorded in the making of this new Physical Graffiti album. So, that, so they were written like two years apart. But I swear, the way that one comes after the other, like Custard Pie, is everything that you want in a, in just your quintessential vintage Led Zeppelin rocker. It starts with a Jimmy Page guitar riff and then it's uh, accompanied by a clavinet. And that's, a, that's the same instrument that Stevie Wonder plays in Superstition. It's the same instrument that Led Zeppelin, John Paul Jones, plays in uh, Trampled Underfoot, which is on that prior album, Houses of the Holy. So he'd been messing with this instrument and it's featured on Custard Pie. But if you listen to the vocal performance by Robert Plant, like he had had like a vocal surgery or something. Like he had a vocal issue after the recording of Houses of the Holy and then going on the tour. So this album, Physical Graffiti, was like the bounce back from that. And I swear, Robert Plant's voice sounds as fresh as ever. My God, he's hitting those high 
Again, howls is how I would describe it. And just, you know, the, the pacing of Custard Pie, it just sounds like the, you know, like the band is being shot out of a cannon to open this album. And through the lyrics, there's like a lot of name dropping on classic, uh, of classic blues songs. And listen to the drums, like uh, John Bonham, he's just, listen to the intricacy of how he's playing that rhythm in the background of Custard Pie. It's, it just, it's so damn riveting. And I swear, again, Robert Plant and his vocals and his phrasing on the song, are just otherworldly. So this, again, is as good an album opener as it gets. Like, I recently did a video on a very another very good opener, and it was the Rolling Stones' Rocks Off from their Exile on Main Street album. That's another opener that's largely overlooked, and that's what that video was about. But Custard Pie is as good as it gets, and it's followed by the, the Majestic, I would say, the Rover. And again, this was written two years prior in the Houses of the Holy section. This one has an equally impressive, at least nearly equally impressive, vocal performance from Robert Plant. And I swear, this song, just the first minute of the song, you get three different A-level guitar riffs. Like, it opens up with like a riff that kind of serves as like the intro. After the drums kind of set the pace, the opening guitar riff kind of rides for the first few bars and then it transitions into another way more groovy guitar riff and then it switches again before vocals even come in it switches to another guitar riff that's just as good if not better than the first two guitar riffs so jimmy page is just on his absolute best musicianship behavior here like three different guitar riffs before you even get to the opening vocals and then it kind of settles into like a kind of like a boom bap style of drum it's a lot more it's a lot more dirgy and kind of one two three four structured than that opener custard pie because again custard pie feels a little bit more freewheeling you know this one gets kind of more into a, a, a pocket where Robert Plant delivers a very good verse. And then after the second verse, it goes into like a bridge where the vocals on the bridge are very good. And again, the switch up in guitar riff between verse and chorus, it just... It, it just adds like this element of like enchantedness. It sounds like you're out in like a like a forest somewhere. Not to mention that additional layer of guitar that almost sounds like, you know, you Michael Jordan, Chicago Bulls fans might remember the 90s Bulls theme song where the announcer would be uh, announcing your Chicago Bulls with Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. And like it would play like this song and the tune was like a ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. And so Jimmy Page is doing something similar when he gets in the, into the chorus of the Rover. And again, it just adds another layer of that just spectacular sonic palette that they're developing here. It, it's quite something. But after that bridge that follows the second verse and then chorus, Jimmy Page breaks into one of his best guitar solos in his whole, in the whole Led Zeppelin discography. I'm not kidding you. It, it sounds like, like it's got Celtic vibes, but it also sounds like you're just out again in like an enchanted forest, but you're approaching the castle. You just picked a bunch of stuff that like leveled you up and you're about to, you know, you're about to save the princess all at the same time, but not before you go to like this, you know, secret market to then pick up some potions. And it, it just sounds like something that's coming from a bygone, almost medieval type era. You know what I mean? Like in Jimmy Page, he sounds like, he sounds like he's literally trying to conjure a lightning bolt from above with his guitar solo here. It's one of their best. So this is isn't only like a underrated Led Zeppelin song, The Rover, track two from Physical Graffiti, but it's also one of the most underrated Jimmy Page guitar solos. And I swear, like the Led Zeppelin lyrics are always like a cross between, you know, love or more specifically sex. And if it's not sex, then it's probably like some Tolkien reference or just something with like mythical imagery where you're, you know, hearkening to like folklore or again, Tolkien or the occult or biblical scripture, you know what I mean? Like there's just a lot of imagination and even fantasy going on in some of the lyrics and it just elevates and intensifies that Led Zeppelin spirit. But yeah, let me know what you think of Custard Pie and the Rover. And here's the thing, if you're not like a hardcore Led Zeppelin fan, you might, have, you might not even be familiar with Custard Pie and the Rover. But if you are, let me know if you think that this one-two punch, the early portion of the Physical Graffiti album, if it is criminally slept on. And if, if, if it should be playing more frequently, you know, on classic rock radio or should appear in these more frequently on Spotify. I mean, the fact that it doesn't appear frequently on Spotify tells me that people aren't individually like checking for it. Like it's not being searched. And 
it's just crazy because anybody who even kind of likes Led Zeppelin would probably just get a kick out of those two just super Led Zeppelin-esque songs. Like, I feel like when they came with Physical Graffiti, they were trying to double down on all things Led Zeppelin. Like, they were trying to make the most Led Zeppelin-ish of Led Zeppelin albums with Physical Graffiti. But I feel like so many other songs on that album are thought about and referenced more frequently than Custard Pie and The Rover. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. And one more thing, uh, neither Custard Pie nor The Rover have ever been performed live and were never performed live in their entirety by Led Zeppelin. Like they would play like I think a piece, like the opening piece of The Rover when they were about to get into another song. But yeah, they never performed Custard Pie and the rover. I wonder why that is. I wonder if it had to do with like the different instruments that would need to be played to pull it off. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, if you know the answer to that, let me know. And please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you love music like I do. I'm Wug. Thanks for tuning in.